FIFA 13, the prime of FIFA, a much beloved installment in the franchise considered as part of the golden era. This game had it all. Its highlights were its arcade-like gameplay, iconic OP players, a Grammy-winning worthy soundtrack. You can't go wrong with FIFA 13, a game that got me truly entrenched into FIFA as a full-time passion, a time where YouTube content and creators were blowing up online. I felt like if I was ever to do a retro rebuild on FIFA 13, I had to take over the QPR, a Premier League team the streets will never forget, one of Loftus Road's finest that could have been on the cusp of real success. The hoops were filled with ballers galore, but more on that later. Also, another reason largely regarded as a piece of YouTube career mode history, Cal Freezy's QPR series was simply a masterpiece. Over a hundred episodes of God Seer quality, we'll see if I can recreate that magic over nine years later, and if so, BCHD can rival Cal Frozen's managerial brilliance in Northwest London. London and be hailed the GOAT by the Rangers far and wide. For context, he won the Champions League in Season 3, so we have a lot to live up to here. We're diving straight in with the £12 million budget, already a 4-star rated team. By just taking a glimpse at their team sheet starting 11, I'm already starting to get a bit of nostalgia after recognising those names. We're advancing to take on a remarkable journey here at Loftus Road. QPR are excited about their future with BCHD, and I can't wait to take on what FIFA 13 is about to throw at me in yet another installment of our retro rebuilds. Last week we did FIFA 14 and you might be able to recognize the menus, but here in FIFA 13, things were very different. The general hub and your main access of the career mode menus, the UI was pretty much completely different. You had everything on one screen. You didn't have the flicker through menus. You just had it all on this left hand side tab. You still had your core features like the calendar. You still had some other key areas that remain the same like signing players. Everything was just displayed in a nice clean format. We're gonna go through our Starting 11 and right here we've got Julio Cesar in goal. From the looks of things, I've put our strongest starting 11 forward. The back four of Jose Boswinger, we've got Stefan and Bia. Nelson and Looney, Fabio will be the back four. We've got Sean Wright Phillips in there. Jisung Park, another former Manchester United player. Granero, the Spanish midfielder. Junior Hoylet, who scored some bangers in his time in the Prem. We've got Adel Tarap, the five-star skiller. As if you could forget him tearing up defenses left and right with his flair. This man was untouchable at times. What happened to his career will never know, but he truly peaked at QPR and I'm glad to see him back to finish off the lineup. In up top is Jibril Cissé, one of my favourite strikers in this Premier League era. On the bench is pretty strong as well, with Green as a backup goalkeeper and Newar Forlan, Rio Ferdinand's brother Anson, Diakte and Andrew Johnson to come off the bench. Of course you can never forget the icon, Bobby Zamora. This is a pretty strong team we're taking over. It's not like Real Madrid Castilla where we're completely building a club from the ground up. We have solid starting bases to work on here. The core has been implemented implemented and with a few marquee signings here and there, this team can be taken to the next level. The board actually want us to finish mid-table, which was what I expected, but of course we want to push the boundaries and hopefully challenging for European places in our first season. This was hands down probably my favourite FIFA in terms of transfers and just getting a general understanding of the career mode save as a whole. You get an insight into every single player without the GTN scouting. This was back in the day, but you just already know everyone's overall. You don't need a scout, you just know straight off the bat. You know what you're investing in, it's on the tin. Right, enough with the talking, let's get involved with some transfer business. Now, if you go on to enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like down below. Let me know down below in the comments what are the retro games we should do rebuilds on. Subscribe and turn on those notifications for more content dropping very soon, and check out the abundance of other retro videos I've done in the past. Now, right here is some of our first transfer pieces of business here with QPR. I'm looking to upgrade the wings right here, and we have traded in Sean Wright Phillips to Porto in exchange plus five million pounds for Juan Manuel Aturbe. Now, back in FIFA 12, FIFA 13, he was the next big thing. He was touted as literally the next Messi. I'm not making it up. This guy had upwards of 85 plus potential. Yes, I know his career right now is down the drain. He never lived up to those glorious heights, but I'm here to rewrite history. Ladies and gentlemen, the Argentine sign Juan Manuel Iturbe. Welcome to QPR. Right now, we can't afford Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Yet another swap deal with Bobby Zamora plus six million pounds to San Etienne. We'll see if we can afford him in the coming days. If not, we'll leave the QPR legend from Calfrizi's save still at the French outfit. Liverpool have announced they've come back with our loan to buy bid decision for a young 17 year old Raheem Sterling for two million pounds at the end of the season. That's a worthy offer. The same has happened here with the young 19 year old Matteo De Chilio. But what I'm going to do right here, considering we need 
need a new upcoming right back. And of course, it's not a Sir PCHD video without signing an Italian. Welcome to QPR on loan initially, Mattia De Ciglio. Wait, hold on. We just have 3 million pounds again. All right, I'll accept the Raheem Sterling transfer. But the English teenager is going to be the newest addition to Sir PCHD's QPR. I kid you not, every save, Mascherano went to Manchester United. There was something severely ingrained in the career mode code that this transfer needed to happen at all costs. A feature that I missed was these random player conversation pop-ups that you couldn't reply to. Right here is our first player departure of the QPR retro rebuild, and it is Anton Ferdinand. Rio's brother is headed off to Aston Villa fellow Premier League rivals for 1.2 million pounds. Looks like Aston Villa might be purchasing yet another one of our players with Fordlin for 4.2 million pounds. The villains have matched our counter price, and he could be at the door. There is a confirmation the Argentine will depart Loftus Road. We've got to raise a few funds somehow, people. A minuscule budget isn't going to increase by itself. Now, thanks to our shrewd business of selling a couple of key players to raise our funds, yet another player is out the door. The aging 33-year-old Luke Young, our right back, is headed off to West Brom for 500k, and that's allowed us to open the door of signing yet another St. Etienne transfer target. This time around, it is Kurt Zuma. The young 17-year-old Frenchman can be the cornerstone of our defense and someone to build our back line off for the years to come. The £4 million pounds is a straight-up transfer deal. I've got to say, back in the day, that profile picture really scared me. I've had nightmares about that sweaty-looking man looking deep into my soul. I think I'm just here continuing on the legacy and passing it on for you guys. Feels like we're doing more selling than actually purchasing, but yeah, there's some key transfers headed out the door, and it's Bobby Zamora. So iconic. What a player for QPR he was. For £2.8 million, pounds, Sunderland have security services. And again, yet another striker, DJ Campbell. One of the coolest names in world football is going to be departing to another Premier League club at Norwich City for £1.2 million, pounds, just under his valuation. Right, we're testing out request funds again. £3 million. Pounds. Uh, yeah, we haven't really formed or established a connection with the QPR board yet, so they flat out rejected that. Now, let me just inform you that after all those sales, we still couldn't afford a Bamiyang without a swap deal, so we've had to favour for Andre Schürrle, the young 21-year-old German. Yes, I think he retired maybe one or two years ago. However, in FIFA 13, he was at Bayer Leverkusen, 79 overall, had a pretty decent potential, mid-80s, I'd say. We've had to offer up the German outfit, 9.5 million pounds, plus Armin Traore, which we weren't really going to use. This purchase is going to drain our entire transfer budget. So most likely, last signing of the summer, welcome to Loftus Road, Andre Schürrle. Finally, one of our transfers was big enough to enter the newspaper right there. A brand new acquisition that hopefully is going to have a better career here, QPR, than he actually did in real life. You might be panicking, saying, who have you sold this time, Sir BCHD? Well, I can inform you that is no one of note. Literally nothing transfer. Sean Derry assigned to Blackburn Rovers for 90k. Here is the original transfer deadline day animation. Oh, this brings back some memories. Before they brought in that oh, quote-unquote new system, just a different little menu layout, but you've still got the 10-hour countdown, the total spend on deadline day, and you know, we're probably not going to be participating with zero to no money left in the bank. A whopping £34 million spent on deadline day. Those are rookie numbers in terms of today's standards. There you go. The first summer transfer window is over, and now we can get on with the rest of the season. The first campaign is done and dusted. It's under our belts, and we have proven to the world that we have the surprise package of the Premier League QPR sitting in 7th with 66 points. This was the season that Manchester United won the title in real life with Sir Alex Ferguson for the last time and in FIFA 13 it is Chelsea on top with 88 points, Man City their nearest contenders as Spurs, Liverpool and Arsenal finish off the top 5, United in 6th and getting relegated is Southampton, Reading and Norwich City. The likes of Fulham and Wigan beat the drop and Sunderland, oh, all these Premier League staples are taking me back. The magic of the cup truly prevailed here in the FA Cup, West Brom made it all the way to the final, losing out to Manchester United 3-0, but we made the round of 16 against Tottenham. We weren't good enough getting knocked out 3-0. Oh, that's right. Back... Whoa, wait, hold on, hold on. I was just I was just reminiscing how we used to be called the Capital One Cup, and I just see we've won the final 3-2, QPR in our first season. We've gotten our hands on silverware, with me being completely oblivious to the situation. Now, London Derby at Wembley. It was a sweet five-goal thriller to see us lift the trophy. A seventh place finish. I didn't know if that got us European qualification, but with the Capital One Cup win, that gets us Europa League football this season to exactly what our lofty season one ambitions were. And here is your squad report. Ji Sung Park 
with five goals and three assists. The 32-year-old Korean still reveling here in the Premier League. We've got Granero with three goals and four assists. Samba Diakte from midfield with six goals and 29 appearances. And Junior Hoyle, the Canadian magician, cutting in from the left with 10 goals and seven assists in 44 games. He is now at an 80 overall, going up a plus three. And it's the man of the moment, our season one wonder. Adel Tarapta told you there was something special about this player. And he showed all his baller-esque qualities here on the pitch with 49 appearances, 20 goals, and six assists for the Mercurial Moroccan. Things you love to see. I forgot how young he actually was here at QPR as Jibril Cisse with 15 goals and eight assists. The Frenchman couldn't be our top goal scorer with 23 goal contributions in 44 appearances. Raheem Sterling with five appearances and two assists off the bench. The Turbe, uh, yeah, it was a pretty lackluster season. 34 appearances and one goal in the Premier League as well as one assist. The Argentine didn't exactly have the dream campaign. Despite his lackluster form, he's gone up a plus four now up to a 78 overall and that is the wonders of having no dynamic potential and a situation which I wish was handled better. Andre Schurler, the assistant manager, is misinterpreting his position. I thought he was going to be a backup striker, but it looks like he hasn't gotten too much game time thanks to Junior Hoylet's just absolute brilliant form. After a more than ideal first season, I think, yeah, it's hard to top that. We've performed above expectations. I'm sure season two is going to throw us many more challenges ahead. I can hereby ratify and confirm that the Rangers are going on a European tour and Bulgaria decide BCHD is not their man. Something I don't miss about FIFA 13 is that the transfer budget allocation was a complete joke. Finishing 7th in the Prem, winning a Capital One Cup. We get a measly, pretty much the same budget we had at the start of Season 1. No progression there whatsoever. So in the financial department, our resources have been stripped. Now to kick off our Season 2 business, in terms of transfers, it's in Bayani Yang. Finally, the 18-year-old. We don't have the funds or facilities for Aubameyang, and we need another backup striker for Jibril Cisse. I'm going to hope the young Maverick end up quickly to the Premier League and can bag us in goals as much as Cissé and Tarapt have over this first season. Also accidentally skipped over this one, it is Raphael Varane. Yes, the Frenchman was in FIFA 13 and he was one of the most sought out after players in Karimo. The centre back slash CDM in this game is extremely overpowered in FIFA 21 and I decided to take it back almost nine years ago. He's on a loan to buy offer move. So if we can afford his transfer fee of £8 million at the end of the season, we'll be able to secure his services right here at QPR. After two back-to-back -back player arrivals, we have now bit on the back burner selling two of our players. Bit of Deadwood, we've got Angelo Balanta, the 23-year-old left mid. He's headed off to Derby County for 400k. And another one of our players sold, the World Cup famous goalkeeper, Robert Green. He made that mistake in the World Cup, all you English fans would know. He's departing now to Germany. FC Nuremberg have secured him for 1.4 million pounds. We have some news on another player departure. It is Max Emma to Coventry City for 275k. You know what? Despite us having little to no budget and not being able to afford things in such a deflated market, we've gone out and invested in the future right here. It is James Ward-Prowse back when he was only 18 years of age for 2.8 million pounds. We're going to poach one of Southampton's best talents. We pay up to the relegated Saints. James Ward-Prowse signs on the dotted line for QPR. Just like that, transfer deadline day has ended with Niyang brought in on a permanent transfer just like Ward-Prowse and our loan to buy offer for Rafael Varane still stands. Do I think this is going to allow us to compete in the Euro League with a competent stance? I'm not quite sure, to be totally honest with you, as we've drawn Udinese, Gumarez from Portugal, and BSC Young Boys in Group A. Many things are up in the air, a lot we're uncertain about, but one thing I do know is that we're going to simulate to the end of Season 2 to see how far this side can progress on multiple fronts. Here at South League standings are looking in the 13-14 season in the Barclays Premier League. Liverpool finished champions, joint on top with Man City. Spurs and Manchester United right behind them as well, making it a four-horse title race. And what would have been a thrilling last day? Westland 7th with 69 points. Not an improvement. We've stayed stagnant but still remaining in the top half of the table and we've proven to be a real force here in England. Getting relegated though on the opposite end is West Ham, Blackburn Rovers and Blackpool. In the Europa League, we finished second in our group, all flying comfortably alongside Udinese. And how far did we go? We made it all the way to a semi-finals where we met Man Manchester United in an all-English encounter. And hey, they went on to win the whole thing against Udinese in the final. The FA Cup saw us not anywhere near the knockout stages. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it through. And this one ends up going to Chelsea by foreign penalties. Now in the final tournament, could we retain our Capital One Cup trophy? And no, we couldn't. Liverpool took us down to one league champions in the round of 16. Taking a look at the team as a whole, we have Julio Cesar at 34, still maintains the 83 overall rating. Natalia De Chilio growing splendidly a plus four to his overall now at a 
77 with two goals this season. Our centre back combo with Mbia and Zuma both growing and performing nicely. Samba Diakke from midfield, our own Paul Pogba of the team, if you will, with six goals and three assists in 55 appearances. We've got Juan Manuel Turbe, and this time he played a bit more of a part than season one. The Argentine netting once and getting three assists to his name now at an 80 overall, valued at 14.5 million pounds. James Ward Prowse played eight times, and Granero with two goals and two assists. We also have Raheem Sterling coming off the bench. Four goals and one assist for the upcoming prodigy and our main man, the MVP, the dynamo of this team. Adel Tarrapt, an absolute baller with 58 appearances, 12 goals and 10 assists, double figures in both of those departments with 22 goal contributions. I don't know who could come close to his numbers this season with Mbai Niang as our striker off the bench, 11 goals and four assists. He's getting on a bit, but Jibril Cisse now at minus two out of 78 and still he's only 32. Back in these days in Korea, Mode. Once you hit 30, your career just headed down the gutter with 9 goals and 2 assists. The Frenchman still putting up the numbers. Andre Schürrle, 14 goals and 7 assists, was our top goal scorer thanks to the Germans' capabilities being able to play up front. We can't not recognize Junior Hoylet though, the Canadian with 14 goals and 6 assists, 20 goal contributions. Talking about veterans, we still have Jisong Park in the midfield. 76 overall, he's down a minus 2, but with 3 goals and 3 assists this season, he still played his part and was a utility player. As we venture into C Season 3. Can we go one further continentally and qualify for the Champions League? We're going to have to wait and see. With our current roster and a summer transfer window ahead of us, this team has all the all marks to be one of the most successful sides Loftus Road has ever seen. Just exactly the news that I want to see loading up into Season 3. Italy win the World Cup. Liazzurri, my boys, they ended up doing it. Viva Italia as they replayed or recapturing that glory of the 2006 World Cup, claiming their fifth title 2-1 against the Germans. Here's our current transfer budget for the season and I guess it's kind of good news because for two seasons in a row depending on our performances it wasn't going up or down it just stayed at that 7 million range but now we are in to 12.5 million pounds I feel spoiled not much we could do with this to actually bolster the squad but we'll see what kind of magic we can pull off and in contrast to our success in FIFA 14 where we were requesting funds every single season the QPR board really aren't budging now it came to my realization I should have known this earlier but we only had one goalkeeper in June Julio Cesar, no backup, so if the Brazilian got injured, we were in some major trouble. So this time, I've invested in a backup goalkeeper. Ali Ahamada from Toulouse in France is going to cost us three million pounds, but will be a worthy backup and could potentially overtake Julio Cesar when his career dwindles to a close. Nonetheless, we're welcoming the Frenchman with open arms. Now, here's one we're bringing back, someone that has served us nobly for two seasons now on loan. This time, we're making an outright permanent from Manchester United, Fabio. Having to adjust the budgets, the Brazilian is making his way back to QPR, headed down south to the capital. So we signed the paperwork, we're giving that one the green light. Costed us seven million pounds, considering they were asking us for 10. I guess we got away with murder there. Breaking news, we have sold a QPR fan favorite. One of the players that I hold dear in my heart, Jibril Cisse, he's been scoring for years now, and he's finally departing the club for 6.5 million pounds. Palermo pounced on a counter offer I thought they would never accept. They've just gone all in for the 32 year old. No wonder why the club went under. The Sicilians don't know what they're doing, but I guess, hey, it helps us out financially. But we had to sacrifice a cult hero of Northwest London. And just to confirm, we have another loan to buy offer in for Raphael Varane. We got the finances sorted out and the young up and coming Frenchman is going to be arriving at 21 years of age. Back again, hopefully this time we can actually make the deal permanent. Now here's a blast from the past. We have Wilfred Zaha. Considering Cissé's departed, we need another attacking threat. For some reason in FIFA 13, despite being played Place as a right winger, Zaha can actually play as a striker, and this one was just moved to Crystal Palace as well from Manchester United. For 4.1 million pounds, it's another young English talent that is thriving nowadays, arriving here at the club, poaching off fellow Premier League rivals. No, actually, they're in the Championship. Crystal Palace aren't in the Premier League, and Bolton are. What a weird time zone we're living in right now. It wasn't a transfer window where we could boast our riches and flex our financial muscle. We had to work with what we had, and now we'll advance into the season. Deadline day is over. Season 3 can well and truly kick on. Here's a peek at our Europa League group stage draw and we are placed into Group D with Trulouse, who we brought our goalkeeper off, Gumiares again, and Hearts. A group we shouldn't have too much trouble with, so I'm guessing we'll finish top. At the halfway stage, here's a bit of winter transfer updates for you. We've got another player sold as Jay Bothroyd, not even a backup striker, but kind of a squad rotational player. He is departing to Leeds United for half a million pounds. And just like that, another one bites the dust that Jamie Mackey, he is departing
exciting. He has been sold to Nottingham Forest for 900k in the championship. Yet another backup striker we just didn't need. Contrary to my beliefs, we actually have been able to pull off a bit of transfer business here in January with Oliver Torres. Back when he was at Atletico Madrid, a no-face Spanish upcoming talent rising through the ranks. We've secured him on a season-long loan and at the end of it, we're going to have to shell out £4 million pounds to secure the Spaniard services, the CM slash center attacker midfielder. Let's see if it can become the Spanish maestro his career was destined to be. In other news, our second purchase is arriving from our rivals. We've doubled it here at the halfway stage and for £1.5 million, pounds, severely undermining his true value, we've secured Nathan Ake, a wonder kid of years gone by, a gem in career modes like FIFA 12, 13 and 14, as the Dutchman will arrive on deadline day here at Loftus Road. After back-to-back -back seventh place finishes in the league, your boys QPR now sitting in the top four, collecting 80 points this season and that was enough to secure Champions League qualification for season four. Manchester United took out the title as Manchester City were right behind them. Towards the bottom end of the table, it is Southampton, Fulham and Wolverhampton Wanderers getting relegated to the championship. It's good to see the Rangers, the boys from Loftus Road getting recognised as Andre Schürrle is announced the player of the Premier League season. What an honour. They ended up topping their group in the Europa League. Group D saw them finish flawless with 18 points. The French outfit Toulouse qualified with them as in the quarterfinals they met their match Marseille with a 4-0 battering. They ended up going and winning the whole thing against CSK Moscow 2-1 in the final. Here in the FA Cup they could have gone all the way to face Manchester United in the final but they stumbled at the last hurdle in the semis losing in a 5 goal thriller to Fulham. Last but not least the Capital One Cup. They wouldn't actually know where to be seen. I think they just gave up on this ever since season 1. Apologies if you can hear some rain in the background. It is raining like crazy here in Sydney right now at the time of recording. Taking a look at the squad hub though now main protagonist this season with 18 clean sheets. It's the Brazilian Julio Cesar. Still going strong at 35 despite him with a minus 2 to his overall. Matai De Chilio didn't have the best season in terms of growth but 2 goals and 47 appearances is decent. We've got Fabio Oponi's return from Manchester United a plus 2 with 6 goals from left back. The PFA Premier League Player of the Year Andre Schürrle now up to an 85 with 22 goals and 9 assists in 49 appearances for the German. Granero the Spanish maestro in the midfield which just makes everything tick. 7 goals and 2 assists for him. James Ward-Prowse had a stunning campaign with 16 appearances, 6 goals and 1 assist. Juan Manuel Oturbe, despite his disappointing performances and weak output, 1 goal and an assist in 39 appearances. He grows up a plus 2. And the mercurial Moroccan continues to impress Adel Tarap. The streets will never forget and he's definitely reinstating his legacy in this rebuild. 15 goals and 11 assists in 55 appearances. 26 goal contributions for our centre attack and mid in Binding Yang. Off the bench slash starting, he's slowly integrating his way into the starting 11 after Cissé's departure, 10 goals and 8 assists. The young duo of English wingers, Raheem Sterling with an assist in 7 appearances and Wilfred Zaha actually netted twice with an assist. We struggled towards the end of the season with our best centre back Stefan Mbia being injured for a lengthy period and also Rafael Varane who did his ACL. Junior Hoylet, always a viable option. The pace demon, our Canadian sender with 8 goals and 3 assists in 50 appearances and that's basically the entirety of the team. I forgot about this feature, you know, squad rankings. You can see who are the main performers, who are considered the MVPs of the team. And of course, on top, Andre Schurler, Tarapt, and Fabio in that top three. And towards the bottom, who is the worst? Ali Ahamada, or actually Bruno Andrande, who don't really play all too much. Using the majority of the transfer budget on Rafael Varane, and that means we have to say goodbye to Oliver Torres for now. We just can't afford him. As Champions League football beckons upon Loftus Road, we're about to enter season four, transitioning into a whole new era. We've set the bar to a whole new high. Let's see if the Rangers can meet their expectations and what kind of wheeling and dealing we can get up to in the summer market. Nah, this can't be. Am I getting pranked? Where are the cameras? This is some kind of sick joke because the QBR board, after qualifying for Champions League football, they've assigned us 4.5 million pounds. Yeah, I'm glad they fixed this in later career modes. Our financial situation is just unbearable right now and you just know that I'm straight up going to request some funds. I don't even care. I doubt they'll give it to us, but it's worth a shot. And yeah, I was right. The board are as stingy as ever. Despite us participating in the best club competition of all time, we've been handed a shoestring budget. Our first player departure and sale of season four is going to be Bruno Andrande. He's departing to Cardiff City for 900k. It's a massive coup for one of my favorite players of this FIFA era in career mode, Ilkay Gundogan from Borussia Dortmund. He's going to join us on a 
permanent deal. However, we've had to sacrifice one of our own. It's a midfielder for a midfielder, a center mid for a center mid. Plus four million pounds on top just to sweeten the deal. Granero is going to head off to BVB. The dynamic ill guy will be a starting contender in the middle of the park. There's your confirmation in what could be one of our biggest sacrifices to date. But boy, oh boy, we're getting a quality player in return. Considering we didn't renew bot swingers or Joey Parton's contract, we got to beef up the squad somehow. And with our limited budget, we have to work with some loan deals here. Jack Butland will be a backup goalkeeper, a third choice or even a second choice if he deems worthy and another solid recruitment at the back. Trying to bolster the defensive department here with the introduction of Karim Rekic, the young underrated centre back I think could thrive here in England. We've got two young talented strikers right here. Ruan from Juventus, both part of the No Face gang and Luka Djordjevic had a cracking potential on this game but I think we're going to favour for Ruan who's just a little bit better than him. That lead at £1 million pounds more. So we're taking on board the Spanish hitman from Juve for just one season. You know we're in desperate times when we're dipping our hand into the free agency. It's the lucky dip right here. Don't get excited. We haven't signed Ronaldo. It is Ronaldo Luis da Silva, just in case you got confused. 71 rated right back. Could be a decent backup to Matthias de Chilio. He's young. He's free. He could blossom in the future. You never know. For the time being, just a little bit more of a play to make up the numbers on the roster. And Juan Jose Torres Gomez. He's our second find right here. At 18 years of age, he's already 73 overall, centre mid. I don't know if he's actually a regen or a real life free agent. It's hard to believe considering he's still only 18 at this stage of the rebuild. Who knows? He could be Javi or Iniesta's regen. Let's find out for ourselves as we welcome Torres Gomez to Loftus Road. Now imagine a Champions League club relying on free agents in the transfer window. Could never be us. It's some more Deadwood headed out the Loftus Road door and that is Nedim Anoa. He is making the switch to Cardiff City. The now 28 year old, he was a beast in FIFA 15, just in FIFA 13, didn't quite reach those heights and he has been nothing but lackluster for us. That all but completes a 2.2 million pound deal. For the club's debut in the Champions League, here is Group G, which they have been drawn into quite generous if you ask me, with SL Benfica, Ajax and Bordeaux, all tricky sides that could cause them trouble, but I'm expecting qualification into the round of 16. The summer transfer window is dwindling to a close with one hour left on deadline day. I think this window was more more about quantity over quality. I didn't want to take any big risks in selling major assets, so we're going to give some of our stars one more chance to prove themselves. As we enter season four, it is all or nothing. It seems that we have a bit of bad news to deliver right now because for the first time in quite a while, we do not have Champions League football to look forward to in season five. On goal difference, we finished in fifth. My soul has slowly been crushed. Manchester United take home fourth spot on goal difference. It's soul crushing as Chelsea win another league title. Spurs and Manchester City make up the top four. The Rangers still finish above Arsenal, Liverpool and Newcastle United. Getting relegated is Reading, Blackburn Rovers and Bolton Wanderers. We'll cover all the domestic fronts first because in the FA Cup, they made it all the way. Well, not all the way. I mean, they got knocked out in the quarters to Chelsea 1-0. I don't think they bothered too much about the Capital One Cup. A round of 16 elimination to Everton. I think they just wanted to get this competition out of the way so they didn't have too much fixture congestion and it was Newcastle to win against Spurs in the final. Final 1-0. By Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. So far, the season is looking pretty embarrassing on multiple domestic standpoints, but here we are in the group stage of the Champions League. They actually managed to scrape their way through in a pretty close group. Second position with eight points. Ajax finished on top. Oh, no way. It's not even suspenseful. You just see the whole tournament tree in front of you. It's not like FIFA 21. How have they made it? How have they not only failed on every single domestic outlook, but here in the Champions League, they have thrived, getting revenge on Marseille, knocking them out in the Europa League all those years ago. They got a 5-4 aggregate thriller against BVB. Borussia Dortmund, Gundogan got back at his old club. Real Madrid took down a 1-0 defeat on aggregate to see us in the final against FC Barcelona. It's actually a perfect scenario because, hey, Cal Frizi's QPR also faced Barcelona. You can't write scripts like these. Things you love to see back-to-back -back seasons. Andre Schürrle has been the player of the year, the PFA player of the season. I didn't even think much of the signing at the time. I'm just glad I made that decision back in season one. Oh, goodness me, I'm still trying to come to terms with it. How we've landed in a Champions League final, I'll never know, but it would be a perfect way to send off a loyal servant of the club, Julio Cesar. 36-year-old Brazilian is retiring at the end of the season with 20 clean sheets and a remarkable campaign. Matai de Chilio grown up a plus two to his overall with two goals in 58 appearances. Kurt Zuma also providing plenty at the back as Stefan Mbia will probably most likely be 
our centre-back duo starting the game. Fabio at left-back with four goals in 39 appearances. And if one, it's Herbe. He is not impressed whatsoever throughout this rebuild, but the Argentina still managed to grow a plus two. Now at an 84, he's in bad form. Two goals in 30 appearances. The days before dynamic potential as Ilkay Gundogan's debut campaign through a Loftus Road, he went up to an 85. His attributes are looking pretty superb right now with 49 appearances. Similar numbers in terms of Samba Diakte. I like to call him the Kante or the Pogba of the team. Good old Andre Schürrle. We thought he achieved his peak last season, but he's gone back-to-back -back player of the year. And this is why with stats like 23 goals and 14 assists, double figures in both of those departments, 37 goal contributions in 60 appearances. This man has had an absolutely flawless 24 months. As Adel to wrap the Moroccan now at 27, he scored 15 goals this season with nine assists at that number 10 spot. A baller for the ages and for QPR, our Canadian hotshot up front with six goals on four assists. It's Junior Hoylet. Nothing too major to report here as we continue to stroll. It's Mbaini Yang. I've got some selection issues ahead of the final as 18 goals and four assists. He puts up a great case to be starting tonight. In other news, Hogan Ethereum. Got no idea who he is. Don't know where he is today, but he scored 11 goals this season with one assist in 31 appearances. The free agents kind of played their part, got involved. James Ward-Prowse with two goals and three assists. Jack Butland in on loan, facing his former team tonight. Could win a Champions League against his loan employers and Raphael Varane with a goal and an assist. Also, Wilfred Zaha has progressed nicely this season. Two goals and three assists, and that is the bulk of the team. Taking a look at your squad ranking, it is Andre Schürrle sitting on top of the pack at El Turap, Junior Hoylet, and even Ilkay Gundogan makes the top five. And also, our wingbacks within the top ten and towards the bottom of the pack, it is our free agents and our third string goalkeeper. Hey, remember this old feature in the press conferences? I mean, they weren't really press conferences. They were just, you know, pick a decision and it happens. A bit more streamlined nowadays with the cutscenes and all, but here you could actually unnerve. You could talk a bit of smack about your opposition. That's exactly what I'm going to do about the Blaugrana tonight. I'm going to unnerve the team. It might be in for a difficult game, but it's always a tough one against Barca in a Champions League final. And here we are. Cal Frozen also BCHD. Take your pick because tonight history will be made between QBR and FC Barcelona. Here are your starting lineups. Pedro, Messi, Iniesta, Cesc Fabregas still within their starting 11. Go on, that. It's the biggest night in the club's history to perform on the European stage and to take home the title live on ESPN. It is the Champions League final, May 2016. It's all about to go down and I missed these pre-match. When it was the big ones, it showed you these animations and the pre-match cutscenes to get you all that more hyped up. The nostalgia is literally flowing through my veins right now. Inject it in because, boy, I feel like I'm in 2013 all over again. They look ready. They look pumped. Under Sir BCHD's guidance. I think they can go out and do something special. A coin toss. What happened to this? I think they removed this from the pre-match scenes as well. Little coin toss where you decide which way you want to kick. I mean, uh, it's the little things. The attention to detail. And it's Ilkay Gundogan, our captain. So hopefully lift up big ears come the end of the 90 minutes or even extra time. And here's our starting 11. In our boys, we trust. Big up the northeast of London. Barcelona, show me what you got. As we kick things off, it's tonight's proceedings. Gundogan, oh man, this FIFA 13 gameplay. I don't know how quickly I can adjust to it as Lionel Messi charges at our defense. He's got a wand of a left foot. We've got to close him down. That's not a peno ref. Good call. Juventus unsure what to do with it in the final third. Ashura wins it back with ease. We do have Diakite again. The German on for a run. But look at that ball from Diakite. He finds... Oh my goodness. He finds Adel Tarap. Oh no. Nice ball. But it's just got to be too much behind it. We haven't been able to form any real... Solid chances on goal. Just little pop shots here and there. Barcelona holding the ball against our will. Diakite, thank you very much. As a beautiful ball lands to Adel Torapt. And he hopped, skipped and jumped over it. And the Moroccan finds himself in a better space here. Can anyone on the inside get on the end of that? And it's Julia Hoyled with the 37th minute goal. He's not known for his heading ability. But the number 23, the Canadian, rises to the big stage. In the Champions League final, it was across inside. He launched onto it. And there was no doubt that was hitting the back of the net. Bounced in and passed Victor Valdez for us to open the scoring here. 1-0. Searching for that first half equaliser, Pedro. Moving forward, look at him go. Beautiful ball inside it says Fabregas, Julio Cesar, Messi was there. What is going on? And it's a scramble. A goal line clearance will get that away. Two combo for Barca right now, and Coencia running down this right hand side like his life depends on it. We continue to swat away the danger, and that will be that for the first up. No more attacks for us. 
Because that's a positive one. We're going 1 0 to the good. It's time to talk tactics. It's time for Sir BCHD to bring the inspirational talk out. We're 45 minutes away from European glory. Tackle Gundogan. He's really come to life in this second half. And now Junior Hoylet, who's one-on-one -on -one with PK and Victor Valdez, came out to punch it away. Move it back into Junior Hoylet. The opportunity. Oh, PK swiped at it, and it was a complete miss kick. And oh my goodness, he hits the post. Now Schurler cuts back on the inside. Delivery, and it's another headed opportunity. Andre Schurler again, and it's over the bar. Off target from our top goal scorer. Is it weird that the old substitution cutscene makes me a little bit nostalgic as Barcelona make a change? They bring on Mr. Champions League, David Villa, for Pedro. Yes, stop. They can do it all on the pitch, this man, alongside Messi. All they're missing is Xavi right now, and we're facing pretty much the best Barcelona team of all time, and that's what they can do on the hour mark. It is Andreas Iniesta who strikes. He's done it in a World Cup final, and he's done it in multiple Champions Leagues. Barca's number eight. The Blaugrana finally unlock our defense, and it's Messi's brilliance. Julio Cesar in our defense, left in tatters. As Sergio Busquets powers forward, it's David Villa in the clear, but the Chilio tracks back, gets involved. That is brilliant Italian defending. I can tell it when I see it. BR tracks him down. Oh no, he's lost it. Cuencia all of a sudden. It's a ball inside and Dishilio saves our bacon. Back possession at El Tarapt in an ideal scenario as the Moroccan with the chip and he was a bit too cheeky about it. Victor Valdez off his line and he wasn't fooled. Oh no, look at this, look at this, look at this. Iniesta again but Dishilio and it's Julio Cesar. Finds Hoylet. Surely Aturbe takes it on his man. Look at the Argentine go. He's still got it. He's still got it despite him being in bad form and all of a sudden it's his time. Victor Valdez Hoylet with the scissor kick. And why did he opt to do that in front of goal? Our number 23 on the volley. Point blank range and he completely scuffed it. Substitution for Barca. Cesc Fabregas comes off for Thiago Alcantara. I hate tackles in this game. You win the ball back then you lose possession five seconds later. Not what I enjoyed about FIFA 13, but what I did was add El Tarapt in through to the pace team and the Canadian Junior Hoylet, and he's hit the woodwork. you got to be kidding me. Oh, one-on-one, -on -one, and the Canadians fluffed his line. Too much maple syrup before the game, and now David Villa, get him to Chilio. He's had him all game in his pocket. And again, the Chilio boots it away, and that will be full time. We are headed in for another half an hour of football. The 90 minutes couldn't split us apart, and it's one apiece. He comes outside to add El Tarapt. Gundogan can't make the run on the outside, but he will win the tackle. And that's a penalty. How is that not a penalty? Referee, have a word with yourself as your way for Lona are back at it again. The rap making the dummy run. And now, look who's on the inside here. It is Junior Hoylet, the goal scorer. Junior Hoylet, again with another chance. And this time he makes no mistake. Buries it into the bottom left-hand corner. And our number 23 rises to the occasion again. Pace over everything. We've chucked him in up top. And he's done the job. Despite him having a few hours in front of the net, he has gotten us the lead. And the Canadian strikes gold on Europe's biggest stage. He will cut back inside. Can he find a good delivery? The Argentine threw it in Yang, and it's just over the bar. Loses out on the ball with nine minutes left. You'd think we'd almost have this in the bag. Oh no, oh no, Messi has done us. Messi's done us. And it's the commentator's curse. Why did I speak? Why do I speak? In the 114th minute, it is the equalizer from none other than Lionel Messi. The Argentine magician completely fooled our defenders, and that was an excellent strike into the top left-hand corner. All over the top, Raheem Sterling's got the pace on his defender. Oh, Raheem Sterling, his touch let him down. Ah, oh, it's Penos, man. Gonna be decided from the spot kicks, and that is probably one of the cruelest ways to go into penalties. We thought we'd won it, and then I had to open my big fat gob. There's a way to go out. It's Julio Cesar winning penalty. I can feel it. I can sense it, but it's the old penalty system. I'm not used to it. Oh, and it just goes in from the hang. I was getting scared there for a second. Thought Victor Valdez got a hand to it here, but Julio Cesar, show him what you're made of, son. He's retiring this season, but David Villa slots it with ease, goes to the left. I hate this thing, man. I hate the timing. Surely to Rapt, and there we go. The Moroccan doesn't have an issue. Converts his pen, and now it's Lionel Messi. He had the brilliant goal to send it into extra time, but what can he do now? He's going down the middle, and the number 10 makes no mistake. About a topsy-turvy career here at QPR, but cement yourself. Oh, no. No, 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 no. What have you done to us, Juan? That's the first penalty missed. Now, Thiago Alcantara. He's going to go right, and a big hand from our Brazilian. In between the sticks, he palms it away. Now we're equal. 2-2. As it's Zuma. Why Zuma? Zuma, our first defender 
up to take it. Get in there, my son. What's Shakira's husband about to do? He's he gonna tried go it. There. He slips like John Terry in the final. What is going on? Oh no, and this one's to decide it. It's Fabio, the loney from day one. We made it a permanent transfer. The X Manchester United player, the controller's vibrating. I feel the tension, surely. Fabio do it for the Brazilians and he does it. Victor Valdez doesn't move and Fabio of all players our left back secures Champions League final victory in the most dramatic of circumstances on a penalty shoot hat as well on the old penalty system by the way so I had to make sure I didn't stuff those up. Julio Cesar goes out winning a penalty shootout. The Brazilian made a couple big saves and PK made a fool of himself. He's definitely not getting lucky with Shakira tonight. A John Terry-esque slip eight years later and the Blaugrana are sinking in their tears right now. The ribbons will be blue and white and the confetti starts to rain down on our players and Sir BCHD, he's done it. He can do it, not just in FIFA 21, but multiple. He's gone back in time, gone throughout the years and yet again, we're successful in a retro rebuild, matching what Cal Freezer was able to do all those years ago. Four seasons and a Champions League title. Unfortunately, no Premier League title to our name, but we did get a Cap uh, Capital One Cup in season one. Hopefully, if you guys did go on to enjoy this one, drop it a like down below. Leave your suggestions in the comments. What other retro rebuilds we should try take on next? I'm open. Hit subscribe if you're new around here for more content just like this. Follow me on all my socials linked down in the description. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day, and I'll leave you with the Champions League final celebrations.